All right, Jack, here's some help on your quiz. You did a good job. Let's see. Is that just a... It looks like... So you picked a parabola, I think. I don't know. Let me... What's this look like? There you go. Okay. So, just like some review. If you have two letters being squared and a subtraction between them, that's a hyperbola. Okay? If the x is the positive one, it's going up and down. If it's y squared minus x squared, then it's going left and right. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, if it's x squared plus y squared equals a number, that's a circle. Okay. If it's x squared over a number plus y squared over a number equals 1, that's your ellipse. If only the x is being squared, that's your parabola going up or down. And if only the y is being squared, that's your parabola going left or right. Okay? That's like the overall most important thing to understand in general about this topic. On the test, if you're supposed to graph an ellipse and you graph a circle or you graph like a hyperbola, you're going to get most of the points completely wrong. But if you're able to graph the ellipse but you've missed some of the critical points of the ellipse, you'll still get most of the partial credit, okay? So for this one, um, you're going to do this thing for this one that, you know, I'm not sure that you've done before, but you've certainly been taught it, and you were supposed to practice it, and it's called completing the square. Do you know anything about completing the square? So you go, why is this happening? You go y squared minus 6y, and then minus, this is going to be a, a lot to teach you here, there's a whole video on this, plus 2x equals negative 7. It doesn't look like any of the forms that we want it to look like, so we have to change the way it looks. We have to make this thing right here into a perfect square. So to do that, you half this number and you square it. So that's a 9. Half this number and square it, that's a 1. But hold on, if I added 9 to this side, I've got to add 9 to this side. Now, I didn't actually add 1 to this side. I added a negative 1, which is quite confusing. So now I need to subtract 1 from that side. So you end up getting y squared minus 6y plus 9 minus x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 1, okay? Now, you might be like, that still doesn't look familiar to me at all. Okay, that's because you have to factor these things. And if you factor them, you get y minus 3 times y minus 3. Ah. And this one, you get x minus 1, sorry, x plus 1 times x plus 1. Excuse me. This is a minus sign in between them. So now you know that since the y is positive, this thing's opening up and down. If the x was positive, it would have been opening left and right. I do believe I said that backwards before. So when you go back to the video, that part was incorrect, was inaccurate. Um, you also know that the vertex is going to be at 3, comma, uh, negative 1. And look, that's where this is. That's the center. No, 3, comma, how did I do wrong there? Oh, no, 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 that's x's. So it should be at uh, 1, comma, 3. I don't know. That's the best help I can give you. 
But on your, I think you'll be able to type that into Desmos, and it'll give you the shape. Okay. But I'd love for you to like kind of know the nuts and bolts into how this is working. That's what I'm trying to do. So the the rest of them will be a lot quicker to go over, Jack. That's definitely the hardest one. So let's see. The center is at negative three comma one. So that indicates it's x plus three squared. And now this is an ellipse, so there's going to be a plus in between there. And you get y minus one squared equals one. Now we got to decide what these things are divided by. And what that is is this is a squared and b squared. A is the distance from the center to the side that's furthest away. So it looks like that's 2, 4. No, no, no. Sorry, that's 2. So when we square 2, we get 4. So A is 2, so this number down here is 4. B is B is this number right there, how long it is from the center to the shorter distance. And that's going to be 1 squared, which is why this just kind of disappeared there, OK? OK, so. I want you to sketch these and decide which way they're opening, and then you'll know which one's positive. This will help fix the mistake I made earlier in the, gra in the, the video, OK? So here, you got the foci. Well, the vertices are at 9 and negative 9 comma 0. But then it says the vertices are at 13 and negative, sorry, the foci are at 13 and negative 13 comma 0. Well, the foci of a hyperbola is always inside of it, okay? So then you know that this thing is going this direction and that direction. So when it's opening up this way, the x is the positive value and the y is the negative value. So you did have that correct. That was good. The question becomes, how do we find out what? So um, A goes with the vertex. So this, since it's x, has got to be 81 down here. OK? Now, C is the difference, the distance, excuse me, between the vertex and the focus. So since this is 13 comma 0, then you know that that distance right there, C is 4. And for uh, a hyperbola, you follow A squared plus B squared equals C squared. It's a minus for an ellipse, just so you know, a lot to this. So then you've got um, A is 9. We don't know B. C is 4, OK? So then you end up getting, uh, let's see, how can that work? Hold on a sec. All right, Jack, I spotted my mistake. C is not 4, excuse me. It's the distance between the origin and the foci. So this is 9, and that's 4. So C is 13, OK? 13 squared is 169. Now it makes more sense. So you end up getting 81 plus B squared is 169. So then B squared is 88, and that's how you get that number down there. Okay.
all you're going to do on your paper is you're just going to kind of talk me through what you learned about that problem through the video and then write the answer down correct. Okay? Just be honest like with your words. It'll be a good learning experience. Obviously, you can see that I'm not perfect at these. It's not what I'm looking for out of you. I just want you to understand what you're doing. Gain some confidence, okay? Okay, let's see if I can fix this one now. Obviously, it's the hyperbolas that give me the biggest problem. Oh, this is an ellipse. So for an ellipse, it's a squared minus b squared equals c squared. You've got vertices at 7 and negative 7, and then at 5 and negative 5. So it's an ellipse. Notice that it's wider than it is tall. This is 7, and this is 5. So a squared is 49, and b squared is 25. No, no, sorry. Oh, those are foci. Those are foci. Excuse me. i got to read it more carefully. We're trying to find that out. The foci are here and here. So that gives you your C value. See it, Jeremy? So C is 5. So then we'll just pop that in right here. 49 minus b squared equals 25. So b squared is 24. And that's where they get that number from. Okay? That means that it's very close to 5. So this is radical 24 and negative radical 24. So, here's what you got to do and when you do when you get this done, I'll print your test, you can use Desmos. Just write up how to do those questions on paper. Fix your test for which I will help you as soon as you define for me the words that you need help with. I will help you with the problems. You need to go through the directions and identify the words you don't understand, okay? We'll do those things together ideally tomorrow morning. Or in and or in class. You missed class again yesterday? Do you have another test with Mr. Williamson? Is that what happened? No. Where were you? It was Tuesday. You skipped. <laughs> no, yesterday was Tuesday. Today's Wednesday. Sorry. Right. You get it though, right? You can't you can't you can't have that happen. Got it? Like, no one here is going to make you do it. And I, that's not good, but that's how it is. You're going to have to do it for yourself. And in the long run, that will be great for you, Jack. You got it? So tomorrow, or later on the day, if you can come back, but I'll be gone during 7th Bell, because it's Wednesday. You're going to come back to me. I'm going to, you're going to do the best you can on this, because you have a video on it. Um, you're going to do the the test, you're going to go through the directions and identify which words are giving you a hard time, and then we'll go over the test corrections. Sound good? All right. Thanks, Jack. Boom.